is on board now. Uh, otherwise, we uh, we will start now. Uh, as I said before, my name is Ole Smith. I'm a technical director with uh, in this area, uh, water uh, data monitoring and also hydrometry. And uh, I'm from WSP in uh, Denmark, situated in Copenhagen. We'll talk about water data management in a climate change perspective. And uh, I put in an agenda. I just move the screen to the agenda. And the uh, first bullet point is that uh, I will talk about the course water data management and data structure and so on. And, uh, a little about the background, our background in WSP Denmark. Uh, and then I will go through the water data portal, uh, what you can find there and how it works. And I have put in two case studies also showing how easy accessibility and trustful data can improve decision tools. And there are some key takeaways. And then uh, we have some uh, question and answers. And uh, please, uh, you can put in the question and answers and uh, then, uh, then we will we'll take them in the end of it. I will take the first uh, 20 minutes with, with this presentation. So first of all, uh, what we see around the world, and of course also in Denmark is uh, we are facing more frequent situation with uh, too much or too little water. This is a situation from uh, from a Danish city called Holstebro, where they, within the last five years, has, has uh, no, sorry, 20 years, has, has had uh, five uh, situations with with floods. And we can also see more situation with uh, very low uh, water level in the summer and also warmer water, which in this case, uh, a fish, uh, a fish dead and so on. So, so we are facing those things, and then, and, and uh, if we're looking at the, the development of, of uh, uh, precipitation, you can see here on this uh, uh, curve. Within the last 150 years, we have had 15% uh, more uh, precipitation uh, annually, and uh, we can look at that because we have the data bank in time. So, uh, if we shall look into the future. Uh, this could be 50 years, 100 years, whatever. We have to learn from the past, uh, and uh, otherwise we can not design the future. And therefore, water management and also water data management is crucial. And in our opinion, it's not only a governmental task. It is a big governmental task to, to, to collect data, but but in the consultancy companies and other water utility companies, you also collect data and sample data. And therefore, it's nice to store those data also in a good way. And, uh, and I will tell about how we do and uh, uh, because we can do this monitoring handling and, and uh, we use those data across a lot of projects uh, and that to benefit from, of course, clients when we assist them with, with data. Uh, shall I go to the history of our monitoring and the reason, in fact, why we are, are focusing on, on structured data and data of high quality, reusable data, and so on. That's because we have been within this business for more than 100 years now, starting uh, collecting data and, and, and storing data and as you can see in the pictures, we are following the trend of the new tools for, for making discharge measurements, new tools for making with drones, uh, water level uh, measurements in rivers and so on. So it's in our DNA to do that. And uh, that's, that's in fact why I, I am keen to put in this webinar. Just to give you an idea about Denmark, those of you who are attending here who is not from Denmark uh, and maybe don't know it, we are a small country. Uh, you cannot see it on the on the map, uh, so small are the country and global. 
size matter, but uh, for the 3,000 square kilometers, as you can see, we have a very low uh, uh, altitude change and topography, flat country, but we have a high land use degree. Farmland is very high in Denmark. Cities and farmland together is more close to three fourths of, of the total. And therefore, there are a very, very huge uh, impact and uh, need for data because we are talking about a lot of uh, water course acts and so on, uh, uh, environmental acts, and, and, and which state that, that some want the water to, to be conveyed and some want the water for nature and people and so on. So, so that's, that's the reason why we, we have a, a dense network of monitoring stations. If we look at some examples for monitoring, I have put them in here and uh, what we in VSP are, are handling could be a marine station where we are collecting a sea level. It could be a Doppler flow meter side looking, looking across this stream here, uh, collecting discharge data online. It could be a, a ice melt station. This is in Greenland. This is for a mining company client who, who needs to know something about the uh, amount of water to a mine pit. It could be dust monitoring. This is also from Greenland. It could be some uh, manual measurement also coming in, or it could be a buoy with the current and wave data for 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 purpose marine and it could be or it could be a, a groundwater well monitoring this is a picture of the dense network of measurement station you will see here if we look at the our data water data portal as i said before we have a lot of data coming in sensor based a lot of them minute value hourly value depending on the equipment those data are in a data flow can be raw data, quality assured level one, level two data, or it could be data from other sources. The red one is data coming in as raw and piped direct to real-time data to flood warning, pump operation or so on. It could be minute value, and it is pumped down to this user portal we have where you can access data, or it is be pumped down to our big uh, Indian uh, comprehensive hydrometric tool where you can uh, uh, making uh, aggregated data and, and calculate on data. And all those data from this system is piped either to planning tools for, for it could be municipality, uh, university citizens, or it's piped back to a databases where data again is free data, where we also collect data from med offices and so on. This is short about the data flow in the water data portal. There's a lot of Indian behind. Uh, I will not mention that now. If you just should give you a short presentation of what data portal uh, is in, uh, in, in a usable situation, you could take this picture. This is to uh, groundwater uh, table uh, monitoring and it's a precipitation. But I could also and shift to our water data portal. I could go to this page saying, uh, go to page and I show here all data from our stations, but this is too complex to look at. And therefore I could go to location type. I could see the rivers, lakes, marine areas, groundwaters. I don't want to see groundwaters. I don't want to see marine and lakes and I don't want to see old stations. But maybe I want to go in and see data from only one station, and I could go closer. I could add a map layer with the rivers or streams, as it is in Denmark, and I could put in and say I would look at the water level. When I look at the water level, I could say, say I want to look at the whole time series. I have now 10 years with high resolution data. You can see some noise here, and I could put quality assurance on and see now ah, this is raw data, this is quality assured data. I could go further in and look at the uh, uh, 
a situation here, for instance, and I could say I, I also want to look at the a precipitation station. I can find a precipitation station nearby and look at the also the precipitation. This is our value. All those data can be downloaded because this is free data accepted from our clients to download. So this is short about easy accessible tool. And now I will show you two cases where you can see what we in WSP have used. I just have to find the right screen again. Sorry. It's here. And I will come to those two case studies I will talk about. And both of them are really need monitoring real-time data and they also re need historical data. In this case we are talking about the flood warning uh, system where you have city of Holstabro is situated here in the stream called Storon. The catchment to Storon to this point is 800 square kilometers and they have been hidden by flooding several times. And you can see it on the picture down here. The reason why they are, have the problems is what we face often globally. The building is too close to a river and even here they have built a hotel across the river. So what do they do right now? They cannot put down the hotel. Uh, that could be an idea, but uh, they have to expand the whole city. But what, what we have done with the desire is we put in real-time data and then we can make some prognosis so they can at least uh, warn people what to do or the emergency services. So what you see here on the plot is the water level data coming in from our measurement stations. It's uh, precipitation data already measured and it's prognosis on precipitation data. So the model is in fact taking information about water level conveyed, converted to discharge and put on the additional precipitation, convert this to discharge and make a new discharge three day, day ahead. And this discharge is then again converted to water level. So now we have water level three days ahead. We have some criteria saying that this level we have to warn with an SMS so that people, for instance, in low scale and their, their houses can be uh, aware that something can happen. And we have the critical situation up higher up where, where we have to warn also the emergency service and so on. So this is a, the real time data part, but this could not be done without good historical data. In climate change adaption cases, of course, this data is also used because the city or municipality of Holstabro right now is talking about putting in some retention ponds and natural here upstreams so they can avoid those situations. And what they're doing here is to dimension this pond and, and, and uh, making uh, rules for, for, for this. But even though they have this system they still have to regulate and they still have to observe. So they still have to uh, need to have their online system. So that's what, that what was one of uh, uh, the situation I can say where, where data is very important to have uh, also back in time. The next example is from a bridge construction. Uh, some of you know that Denmark is uh, there's a lot of island and therefore there's a lot of uh, connection connection by bridges. And in this case, we are in southern Denmark where we are under construction or, or Denmark has in construction of a new bridge. And when they construct a new bridge, they have to, to find the precise timing of putting out those big plinths, which is the the, the concrete constructions. This is precision work, which means that you need to know how is the current, how is the waves, and how is the wind, and so on. So based on online data from uh, this uh, current wave uh, boy, and based on, again, free data information from prognosis, which is the red line, the blue line over here, 
Now we're talking about kernel speed. That's what the boy observed, and that was the prognosis state. And this one is the max splint operation. So that's the max where they have are allowed to operate. And then based on those data, you can put in and make online reports coming out every hour based on if the current is higher than 0 0.25 meters, if the wave height is higher than 0 0.3 meters, or the wind speed is higher than 10 meters, you are not allowed to work. Therefore, the bridge constructor can go down and this report and see, ah, here I can work, here I cannot work. So it helps a lot in, as planning tools to uh, also uh, bridge constructors. And of course, again, these data can be used because the bridge constructor allows those data as uh, be given to, for instance, Denmark's Meteorological Institute, who provide the prognosis, and they can improve the prognosis, and they can also use those information to new sites because they can improve all prognosis for Denmark. So, so again, I would advocate for free data, more sharing of data if possible. Okay. Uh, this was uh, a second case study, and uh, then I'll go down to my my takeaways because, uh, as I said, why focus on monitoring, storing, and reuse of data? In my long career, career uh, I have I learned that that uh, there's often uh, you come back to sites or nearby sites where you, you want to make uh, a new EAA or you want to make whatever. And and it would be so nice if data could be shared. And uh, the only way they can do that in no time is that they also are stored in structured way. That's sustainability, in my opinion. Uh, and water data management, of course, Doing this the right way to support uh, all our stakeholders' uh, decision uh, making. Uh, it could be uh, even private persons' decision making, uh, municipality, whatever uh, are involved. Uh, and of course, water data management fully support UN goals because if you look at the 17 UN goals, water is maybe in only in, in a few of, of them direct, but the but, uh, they are affecting all the others because without water, you have poverty, you uh, have a uh, uh, migration, uh, whatever it's called. Uh, so, so water is essential. So therefore, it's a must. I don't have to comment more on that. And I already have said that uh, it's more easy to develop tools on top of data when you have uh, good data. Yes, I think it's close to what I had on this session. And uh, you can see a picture here in the left right corner. It's one of my colleagues who was uh, measuring stream uh, discharge, uh, uh, I think it was last summer. And when he went to return to the, the, the safe ground and bank, there was a, a lot of curious uh, 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 cows uh, looking at him and saying, what? What are you doing? So uh, uh, that's uh, the, the, the entrance to, to start the questioning sessions for for this, if there's some. Perfect. Thank you, Ole, for a fantastic presentation. I love the photo with the cows. <laughs> so before moving into the Q&A period, I would like to remind attendees to enter your questions in the question box on the GoToWebinar platform. And also you can download the PDF version of the presentation from the handout box uh, in the dashboard. Uh, Ole, if you can open your webcam, it will be really nice to see you. Yes, and I will I start with the, with the first question. Does your team collect data during and directly after a major storm event in person, for example, taking photos of flood areas? In, in general, uh, our people doesn't uh, doing this, but, but municipalities and, and the, 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 the stakeholders nearby the flood are going out in the field taking picture 
normally is uh, today's drone pictures and so on they are using and uh, to, to look at the flood extension. Uh, we even have situations where they are flying with drones and with terminal cameras in the nights to to uh, to do a digital way of of uh, looking at the flood extension. So this is done. This is not done by by us directly uh, in, in WSB, uh, but but in some cases. But yes. Thank you. Are your clients pushing for analysis that take climate change into account? Indeed, we WSP Denmark make a lot of, of uh, uh, climate change adaptation projects uh, where we have to take those climate changes into account. In Denmark, we have uh, factors, uh, ads on uh, uh, precipitation. You can add it for what is will be in 100 years cloud burst. You have the same on river flows, uh, max flow, uh, and so on. So, so indeed, we do. Thank you. Another question is, I'm curious regarding the ownership of the data. Is all data available for anyone? The availability of data depends on what the client wants. If it's a public client, or not, not necessarily a client, but if it's a public organization, the, the, the uh, EPA in Denmark, uh, data is available for everyone. The Danish Meteorological Institute data is free data, is available for anyone through APIs, or it could be through a, a water portal as this or other portals. If it is, a, now I just come in with an example, if, if, if it is a, some sensible data, it could be a mining project where, where they have used a lot of money. Of course, they don't necessarily want to share it with their competitors on the other side. So, so all all data is not available, but but most of them are. A lot of them are, and I I can only uh, state that I, I I would look that like if more data would be available through when you are at least ended with the project. Is that hopefully a good Thank enough you. question? Answer? That's great. Thank you. Are you able to validate how precise your prognosis is? Yes, uh, you saw the example with our uh, desire model. Uh, what, what it does is it takes data down from, of course, an uh, online monitoring station. It takes data from prognosis and so on. But prognosis is, that's a, you can call it a time series in, in, in two dimensions because and when in a time step, you have a lot of data uh, three days ahead. So we have a system where we, in fact, store this two-dimensional uh, uh, prognosis system, which means that we can we can go back and say, I want to compare with the uh, 12 hours prognosis one year back. So 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 yes, that, we we do that, and of course we can evaluate the model and we can improve our models on based on that. Thank you. Can the system be implemented in other countries? Basically, uh, you saw hopefully the slide where I showed the data water portal, uh, where the, we have a system with uh, data aggregating uh, management. This is an, uh, a system, uh, English version, where we have implemented already in uh, Latvia and Lithuania and in Morocco. You also saw that the data water portal was in fact in, in, in Danish, but but it could easily be translated to to English also. But then there is some, of course some issues about all data, uh, which sensor is it in our country you want to, to have up in the system and so on. So there must be, uh, there's some, some adaptions in some cases. So I will say, uh, yes, yes, it can. Thank you. Has Denmark used this data to design on-site storage in urban and rural areas to slow down the water and reduce flooding, as well as making farmland more resilient to drought? Uh, uh, 
can I, can I have the question one one more? Sure. Is has Denmark used the data, this data, to design and to help um, rural areas uh, to reduce floodings and droughts for farmland to make it more resilient? Yeah. There's a lot of project also for 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 for, for that. Uh, the data are widely used for for if it's uh, as I said a uh, flood situation and 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 uh, adaptions again. Uh, how they can uh, uh, yeah, improve uh, uh, both farmlands, but also improve areas with nature and, uh, and so on. So uh, there's a lot of also my colleagues working with, with the issue and I think they are better to answer more in details, but, but all those data are used in, in all projects where you work with water. Thank you. I will take the last question. Uh, this is regarding the BOI uh, solution that you mentioned. I think it was case study number two. Uh, could it be used in other bridges uh, or survey cases around the world? The, the, the BOI is, uh, if you look at uh, uh, for BOIs, uh, there's a lot of manufacturers of BOIs. This is a uh, Danish produced boy, but it could also be a, a UK or US or whatever. Norwegian, uh, there's there's a lot of uh, manufacturers of those boys, and and uh, and the only thing is that you have to make sure that the boy can send data either by satellite or uh, GPS, depending on how far offshore it is. Uh, but but uh, if you can send data, of course, the same solution can be used in other countries. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, so we're at the end of our webinar uh, session. Thank you for all your questions and uh, please feel free to follow up directly with all of you the contact details shown on the screen. And I would like to thank all attendees for, jo for joining us today and thank you all for a fantastic presentation. You are welcome and have a nice evening. If you are Denmark or, or if you are abroad, Canada, maybe a nice Morning. Thank you.